Good morning, good morning, good morning, morning, morning. Yeah. <laughs> happy Tuesday. Happy, happy Tuesday. Happy, happy Tuesday. We made it, family. And this coyote was a little worried. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm late again. <laughs> Have you guys figured out that this coyote is not a morning person? I am not a morning person, family. Not a morning person at all. But that's okay. Because you know what, family? I am just going to keep on going through my routine. I keep setting up these expectations. I'm like, okay, you're going to get up at 6 o'clock. No, you're not. You're going to get up at 7 o'clock. Maybe. <laughs> and then you're going to shoot at 8 and then all these other things. And you know what, family? When I'm late, everything else is late. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna go with the flow and have a good time anyways. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Ah, uh, how are you doing, family? Yeah, I couldn't sleep last night. It was really bad. There's a lot going on in the world, family. I was talking with my beloved sister, um, who is in... Um, She's in Indonesia right now. And for those of you who are regulars with our podcast, our superhero podcast, um, it's on a break right now, family. I am working on my proposal. I need to propose my dissertation in the next two months, like for real, like no joke. So I am writing my chapters furiously. I wrote two pages yesterday, one page single space, family, a page and a half. But it's a great introduction. I am... Um, not only introducing my own original indigenous critical race whiteness intersectional framework, walking as coyote, but I'm also using my vlogging project, of which you are all witnesses. This is my doctoral project, family. These cute videos, this yoga tapes, my daily prayer, the creation of my church, um, my videos on PTSD and anxiety. I have crippling anxiety, family. I don't think anyone realizes um, how bad my anxiety is, right? I make these videos and I look okay. And then I make the other video when I'm like crying in the bathroom, right? Um, because when you have PTSD family, it does affect your emotion. It affects your emotions, it affects your body. When my body is very stressed out, I get physically sick. I can throw up. I was sick three times last week, family. Three days, I was very sick last week. And I was on vacation. I was literally on vacation and I was still having panic attacks. So family, it is about how well we manage it. It is something that will never go away. This coyote is never gonna be cured. There's no magic cure. I am never gonna magically be cured of my PTSD. What I can do is I can manage it. I can say, hey, PTSD, I see you PTSD. I acknowledge how you're affecting my life. I acknowledge that you're the one that's making my tummy hurt. Or I acknowledge that you're the one that's making my stress go out of the roof <laughs> and I can do something about it, right? I can recognize in the moment of panic when I'm having that panic attack that this is my reaction to my condition, which is PTSD. And it is because of these other variables that I'm having this reaction, right? And that can help me calm down, calm down from the panic attacks, family. Because please remember that many people around us are affected by anxiety, depression, and PTSD, just like this coyote. So please don't forget to be gentle to yourself and to each other. Always family, always with family, never alone. <laughs> today, family, today we're gonna be doing some floor yoga. So don't forget, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we have our chair yoga for elders. Mondays, it's um, chair yoga, Wednesdays, it is couch potato yoga, and Fridays, it's uh, wheelchair yoga. So, Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's floor yoga. Floor yoga. <laughs> All right, family, let's get this started because we feel better. Let's be honest, we feel better when we do a little something for our bodies. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's begin in a nice, comfortable seat. Depending on where you're at today, you could even start this part on your couch or in a chair. So truly find a place where you can get comfortable because we're gonna start with some pranayama, some breath 
work breath practice. And this can be um, a little tricky, especially if you're new to the practice, uh, because I think a lot of times people don't consider or know, uh, haven't experienced that the breath practice is as challenging <laughs> sometimes as the asana practice. Um, they are part of one physical practice, the physical branch of yoga. So um, if it's hard for you to settle in, I guess I'm just saying you're not alone. Let's give it a try because with the breath, we can really change our game. So the theme of today is a little goes a long way and just taking, you know, I mean, we know this right intrinsically, intuitively taking one deep breath at a certain point in your day, um, whether it's in traffic or when you're dealing with someone or, you know, um, can absolutely support you in that moment, can, can totally be a game changer. <clears throat> so that said, come into your comfy seat and sit up nice and tall. And then just allow your energy to kind of land here and maybe put the hands wherever feels good. So be really mindful about where you are placing the hands just as a way of spreading a little awareness out. Spread awareness out to all parts of the body, sit up nice and tall, and we're not gonna do anything in particular today, so nothing fancy, just a couple moments of deep breathing, all right? So <clears throat> no fancy pranayam, just really conscious, full deep breaths. So we'll do about 10 of them, but don't worry about the number count. Just close your eyes, I'll breathe with you. Keep um, lifting up through the crown of the head, sit up nice and tall. And then after about 10 or so breaths, I'll cue us. So you can kind of trust the video, trust me, trust yourself and close your eyes. Here we go, sit up nice and tall. And we'll begin to deepen the breath. So big conscious breath in. Mindful release as you exhale out. And see if you can slow your breath down a bit, make the inhalations a little bit longer and smoother and same for the exhalations. And then notice where your thoughts have gone, where the mind goes, and just notice that, acknowledge that, and then come on back to the breath practice. We're breathing deep here, deep breathing. And on your next inhale, imagine the breath coming in through the nose and traveling down. So the direction of the breath is down as you inhale. And then it does this kind of sweet little somersault and then comes up as you exhale. Let's try that one more time. Inhale, breathing down. And then exhale. Breath travels up and out through the nose. Great. Bat the eyelashes open, loop the shoulders, and we'll let that go. So it doesn't mean we're going to stop the conscious breathing, but we're going to kind of let the movement and the breath uh, become one. When two become one. Is that spice curls? <clears throat> So big looping of the shoulders. If you are on your couch or in your chair now, go ahead and come on to the ground. Maybe you have a yoga mat, maybe just onto the floor. And we'll come into a nice, comfortable seat. So keep conscious breath going, whatever that means to you. Keep uh, coming back to a nice, deep inhale, nice, long exhale whenever you can. 
A little goes a long way there. Sit up nice and tall. We'll take the left hand, just spread it super wide, rotate the left wrist, and then go ahead and place it on the ground and inhale, reach the right fingertips up and overhead. Side body stretch, so good. A little goes a long way here, so find a little movement. Whether it's gentle pulsing, maybe it's uh, opening the chest up towards the sky and then rounding it down to the ground, checking in with the shoulder. Find your deep breath here. And then come back to center. Ooh, I do declare. And then right hand, spread the palm super wide or rotate the wrist. So this is great if you sit at a desk or just kind of opening up through the hands, the wrists, and then side body, uncrumbling. Great for lower back pain too. Remember, it's all connected. Find movement that feels good here. See if you can keep up with a conscious breath. Great, then come back to center and send your legs out long. Hmm, a little sore. Firming down through the tops of the thighs. Nothing fancy here. Reach the fingertips up as you breathe in and then forward fold as you breathe out. So even if you only land here, you're great. Way to be where you're at today. You need to breathe into the back body. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Okay, so don't, don't, don't feel like you need to push it to any certain shape here. Focus on the sensation over the shape. So find your version of this here and then connect to your breath. So this is also good standing. If, if this is too tricky, um, you can do a standing forward fold instead of a seated forward fold. And that one you can do anytime, anywhere. Just be careful when you do it in the shower so you don't slip. Wherever you are, whether you're seated or standing here, forward fold, Allow the weight of the head to relax and release down. This is an awesome pose to check in with daily, not just for the muscles of the body, but for the nervous system, for the mental aspect uh, to your practice. And connect to your sitting bones. If you're seated, if you're standing, connect to the soles of your feet, all four corners. And everyone tuck the chin into the chest and roll it up. Great. Just in case you took me up on the standing, come on back down to seated. And just nice and easy, we're going to take the right foot uh, into the left palm. So start here. Be super mindful here, especially in these little yoga breaks. You can never um, be too mindful because it's always kind of in those unthoughtful moments that you end up kind of tweaking something or anything if if ever so um it's usually not in the actual yoga practice at least with my community of friends or people get injured it's always kind of in the moments in between so stay present and we're going to come to a little uh rocking of the cradle of the leg and the foot okay Sorry, right hand comes to the outer edge of the right knee. And this will be a little different for everyone. If you're like, I can't grab my foot, no worries. Just grab your um, calf here. And so what, again, we're focusing on is the sensation over the shape. So unfortunately, I mean, I don't want to be negative, but unfortunately we see a lot of instructors just kind of slamming into the shape because it's in their body and then it's hard to decipher what it is for us. So it could be this for you. It may not be this. Okay, on the same token, if you need a deeper stretch, go ahead and bring that right foot into the crease of the elbow, the left arm, you can come here. So we're here, we're here, we're here. And we're imagining the ball and socket <coughs> joint here on the right, in the right hip. And we're breathing and we're doing our best to sit up nice and tall. So all of these things are great things we can do as a sequence or great things that we can do on their own. For instance, this is a great thing to do. All of these things actually so far are really great um, to do while you're watching TV. So after this video, if you're watching this on your big screen, you can pop on an episode of your favorite. See, if I had a TV show, I could send you to my TV show right now. Just kidding. Girlsy. We're working on a TV show, that'd be fun. But I want all the community to be in it. Traveling around and visit the community. 
Uh, yes, take your right foot, cross it over. Nice twist here. We're gonna hug the right knee with the left elbow. Roll up through the spine. Swim the right fingertips behind and boom. Find what feels good here. Maybe point and flex through the extended leg. So I wanted to mention, uh, it can be this twist or it can be any twist. A little goes a long way with the twist. Recline twist. You always want to find that deep breath in a twist to get the full benefits. And then we'll release and switch on the other side. Switch to the other side. Bend the left knee. Rock the cradle. So it's a practice, you know, yoga asana, we're, we're taught shapes. I mean, that's the physical practice. So um, take it upon yourself with your home practice. And I think that's what's cool about yoga with Adrian too, because this will just help you when you go to a public class to focus on sensation over shape. And then you'll want to come back to your mat. You're going to want to take these little yoga breaks every day. And then you stop comparing yourself to other people too, at least I have, or I try, because I'm like, you know, you know, when, it, when you really focus on what feels good for you, it kind of really doesn't matter what other people are doing. I mean, you can be inspired by someone, but. This, this video turned into a yoga lecture by Adrian. <laughs> okay. So after you've moved around a little bit here, go ahead and cross it over into your twist. Notice if you're kind of leaning back here. Notice if you've lost connection between your feet. Reconnect. Great. And then we release. Cross the ankles, come to all fours. We have two more things to do. So you know your cat cow, so I'm not gonna do that one because I feel like everyone really knows that anyway. And you can insert that here as a freestyle. We're gonna bring the knees super wide, big toes to touch. If you come to my public classes, I rarely do not do this um, next little ditty because I feel like we're constantly here with the head, neck forward here, here all the time. So um, this is great little uh, neck and upper back body hygiene. Here we go. Inhale, reach the right fingertips forward, find that length, that stretch in the right side body, and then try to maintain that as you thread the needle. So right fingertips in and underneath the bridge of the left arm, and we come to rest on the right ear, outer edge of the right shoulder. Keep a connection with your big toes, and the knees are wide so that we can find this awesome rock in the pelvis here. Then breathe into the upper back body, and stay connected through your hands. So you can really use this left hand to press away from the earth here, either by bending the elbow or finding extension. You might also like to bring it all the way up or even around, hand on the sacrum or to twist. You know what to do here. Listen to your body. Big, deep, conscious breaths. And then play with that directional breath. Inhale, it travels down into the belly and exhale up and out. Then slowly release, press into your foundation and come back again. Pay attention to the mindful moments in between. And the same thing on the other side. Left fingertips stretch. Try to maintain. So sometimes we just come into it from here. We have all this collapse in the side body. So this little bit of consciousness in the side body goes a long way as we thread the needle. Right finger, excuse me, left fingertips underneath the bridge of the right arm. And same thing, try to stay connected to your toes. Find what feels good with the right arm and breathe. If it's too much, don't worry about it, but otherwise maybe you play with that direction of breath, inhaling, filling the belly with air. And then exhaling, imagining the breath, traveling up and out the nose or the mouth. Sweet. One more breath. 
and beautiful release. I always love my view from here. Like it depends where I'm at and which day, but today is really pretty. Okay, coming back to seated. You can also do this one standing. If you've done a yoga with Adrian video, you've probably done this before. I'm actually gonna come to my knees. Neck circles, not 1980s neck circles, as fun as they were, are, <laughs> okay? We're putting, this is what we say in kids yoga, but it works. We're putting a little marker here. You can choose your color. Or if you're sophisticated and modern, you can put a little charcoal pencil on the tip of the nose. And we're starting with small circles today. So small, tiny, tiny circles. Head over heart, heart over pelvis. So sit up tall or stand tall. And then allow your circles to grow larger. And you really need to kind of drop what you look like here and really focus on the sensation here to find that yummy spot. I'm a great example of that. Sometimes I'm just like in public, like, oh. And then allow the circles to grow larger. So we start at like button size and we move to like full dinner plate size. And you can move through like saucer, salad plate, dinner plate, and then reverse your circle. Check in with your breath. And if you find a catch, you might rock a little bit in that place. You might notice that the shoulders have started to creep up out of just our habitual self. And so relax your shoulders. And then bring it back to center. Draw the palms together. Big breath in. Big breath out. Okie doke, my friends. So that was a little goes a long way. I encourage you, a little friendly invitation to try this once a day for a week. And um, I think the big idea here is that you make sure to take time for yourself and that you don't always need a big, fancy, sweaty yoga practice to do that. Sometimes just a little bit goes a long way. So it's just doing one pose or one little ditty from this practice or returning to this video every day for seven days. I encourage you, schedule it in your planner, whatever you need to do, just like you would schedule anything. You wouldn't skip eating, you wouldn't skip a shower. See if you can touch on a little bit of this every day for a week and let me know how it goes okay i know it's a it's a challenge so what great advice family what great advice this coyote has not been doing my yoga as faithfully as i used to family um i do my quick yoga with you guys in the morning and then i'm supposed to do a warrior yoga after i have been skipping it and i can tell <laughs> i'm really sore oh very sore I train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with Gracie Bada four to five times a week. And I also lift uh, about three times a week. Um, and I try to do cardio three times a week too. It's a lot. And um, yoga helps me do all of those things. It helps me be flexible and it helps me um, really, really stretch. And it's important, family. It's important. <laughs> I want to be able to touch my toes when I'm 120. So this coyote is going to keep yoga as part of one of my daily habits. <laughs> Don't forget, family, I have kept off 110 pounds. That's correct, 110 pounds. I lost a small human. <laughs> I had been 290 pounds for about 10 years, family, 220 since I was about 18 years old. Um, right now, family, I'm about 179, and I like to keep it there. My target's about 172. We'll see what happens. Yesterday, I did a huge thing, family. Guess what happened? I have been working out like a crazy person, like so much, but I have not been losing my weight. I have been gaining the weight because I eat when I'm stressed, when I have a panic attack, when my PTSD is riding me, um, when I'm having bad anxiety. I will go to my go-to's. Shopping. <laughs> Can't do that anymore, family. It's COVID, so this coyote can no longer go shopping. Food. Food for me is easier to access. As a survivor of trauma three times over, I had coping mechanisms. Shopping and food were two of them, my two main ones. 
Um, now I have transitioned over to working out. So instead of shopping, instead of eating, I now work out. And you know what, family? It has been the best trade I've ever made in my life. Um, so yesterday I made a decision. I gained four pounds over the weekend and I was upset. I was really upset with myself. And I was like, Kitty Coyote, it's because you went to the movies and you had popcorn and you had slushies and you had M&Ms and you had caramellos and you had cake and cupcakes and all this jazz. And I was like, you know exactly why you gained that one. And so family, in an effort to make sure that I am a superhero in training and to help be have a healthier me, I gave up sugar yesterday. On August 8th, yep, August 8th, 2020, this coyote gave up sugar. And I thought about it and I was like, well, you know, you can do one sugar a day. Let's try that. But guess what, family? I had been trying that for a month. It did not work. I need to go cold turkey and just stop eating sugar. No more cakes, no more desserts, no more candies. Uh, I'm still gonna eat fruit and juice. Orange juice is my weakness, family. Just so you know, this coyote loves simply OJ. Um, but yeah, I gave up sugar yesterday and that's a pretty big deal. Um, I also had given up soda because I had gastric bypass uh, five years ago, six years ago, 2019, I think, uh, or 2018. Um, but you know what, family? It's going to be okay. So join me in creating healthier habits. Oh, also wearing my favorite tea. I love this guy. He's so cute. So I'm just saying, family, I'm getting my workout together. I'm finally writing my proposal for my dissertation. That's huge, family. I have been out of comps for four years now. That means that I have been able to write on this stupid proposal for four years. But it was not my fault. There was a white male academic predator that created a cult and was sleeping with students and hurting them. And I had to take him out. And that happened in 2018, family. And it messed me up. I hated academia. I hated um, work. I couldn't write. I lost my voice. It affected me greatly and I couldn't be super. And so it took me many years to recover from that. I've been doing warrior advocacy and it helped me become brave and confident. Um, and it makes me the lethal academic that I am today, family. Yep, this coyote. I'm finally ready to move on to the next stage of my life, family, which is my dissertation, finally becoming Dr. Dre by the end of 2023. Inshallah, as my sis Leo would say, Ancestors, hear my prayers. Everyone who's listening, please bless this coyote. Family, in addition to being an Ivy League graduate, a published author, a researcher, an advocate, a medical marijuana user, I am also former pastor in the decolonized family, just call me Coyote of Coyote's Lodge, House of Spirituality, could erase theory of medical marijuana. Every day we have a daily prayer family. We ask our ancestors for their guidance and blessings, and we have a special intention for the day. Today's prayer family is inspired by this coyote's lack of energy. <laughs> is there anyone else who's just so tired, like so tired, like pass out tired, like every evening family? There's a lot on our plates. A lot going on. There's an economic crisis. There's inflation, rising gas prices, groceries, um, rent. There's a lot going on, family. So this is again your daily reminder that if everything is not okay right now, it is not you. It is COVID. It's white supremacy. It's capitalism. It's all those other things I just mentioned. So please remember to be kind to yourself and to each other. Yeah, me today our very special prayer because we're so tired. <laughs> is for strength and determination because they go hand in hand. Yeah, me, you're my first example of warrior woman and you never said, never, my grandma didn't take shit from no one family. Sorry, Gammy, sorry. <laughs> but my Gammy was powerful and she advocated for her children. She made sure we had rights. She made sure that we were confident and brave and had opportunities that only other Indian children could dream of. I'll be honest, family. My Gammy was a warrior who made sure that her family was safe and that we had opportunities. Gammy, can you give us some of your strength? Lend us your fierce braveness. Because Gammy, we could use it. COVID still affecting us and we could use some of your strength. So send us your strength, Gammy, as we continue to do honor to your name. Papa, Papa. 
I miss you, Papa, and I love you. Ah, yeah, Papa, there's a lot going on, and we could use your love. My Papa, he was the epitome of love and support. And for today, Papa, we're asking for your help with determination. That determination to stay strong and to do whatever we need to do in our in our roles as community members, as youth who are leading the future, as elders, as teachers, as parents, as everyone in between, as we all do our parts in order to transform this world into humanizing change. Dear Papa, you were determined determined to keep our family safe. You always had a loving ear and provided us with security and safety. May you help us find those who will lift us up in our journey as we continue to transfer in this world. Send us determination and strength, Papa. We love you. May you rest in peace. And to my great great grandpa, Pablo Beta, true revolutionary at a sled of Pueblo statesman. To all of our aunties, uncles, gammies, papas, those who are blood and those who have adopted us in our hearts. May you all rest in peace and send us your blessings. Send us that determination. Send us that strength of body, mind, and spirit as we continue to cause trouble in your name, fighting injustice, and ensuring opportunities for our loved ones and communities. May you all rest in peace. Family, it's Tuesday, and it's another brand new opportunity for us to do things differently. I'm excited about what's going to happen today. I am going to work on page two to five of my dissertation. Yesterday, I knocked out the first two pages, so I'm pretty excited. I have about three weeks to pull this off, family, and I got this. I got this. I need to propose no joke by September, October the latest. So I am writing, writing, writing. So you'll see me for daily prayer and you'll see me for yoga. Um, but for right now, family, other than the podcast for the love of my life, I think I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break because I need to get this proposal done. My gammy says it's time for me to become Dr. Dre. <laughs> I love y'all. I'm off to guys trouble somewhere else. <laughs>